Hi everybody! In this tutorial we are going to learn how to insert more than one viewport in the layout tabs. We will check out the different types available, how to create a custom view that you can easily apply in the viewport, and how to add the text with a viewport scale which updates automatically. When you are ready, we can start learning. In this tutorial, we are going to use as an exercise one of the sample files that come by default when we install AutoCAD. I'm going to open a file here and choose this option, Explore Sample Drawings. Go to Database Connectivity and select Floor Plan Sample. Then, once you click on OK, you get this message, because that's a read-only file. This means that we cannot modify it, but we can create a copy and save it in a different folder. As you can see, this is a floor plan of a building, I don't know what it is, but it's interesting, because if I'm not wrong, it's completely symmetrical. Ok, now let's go to the Layout tab. Here we have a single viewport, and our goal is to have several of them in this paper. Now the first thing, notice that the viewport is pink. Hmm, let's see why. Yes, the viewport is located at the layer CPU, the layer of the computers in this floor plan. As I don't think that's logical, let's create a new layer for the viewport. I'm going to the layer properties manager, and if you don't have this window here opening automatically, you can click on the button layer properties at the layer panel. Now, click with the right button and go to New Layer. I'm going to name it as Viewport. And for the color, I'm going to choose white, because remember, in the layout, the white colors turn to black automatically. Then select the viewport and from the layer drop down list, change it to the new layer. Now, the next step. I'm going to resize the viewport by dragging this grip in the corner to more or less here and then with the command move I'm going to move it a bit up to have more space in the sheet. Now, double click on the viewport to switch to the mode of space then I hold the mouse wheel and drag the drawing more or less to the center. Now what I need is to set the scale that all the floor plan fits in the viewport. In some projects, we have requirements for the scale that we need to use. But suppose here we don't, and we just want to fit the drawing in this viewport. In that case, I can zoom out a little bit. Let's just drag it to place it in the center. Then, in order to have a more accurate scale than this one that is showing here, I can use the calculator and I'm going to divide 1 per 0 0.0015, more or less that number. Ok, with this result I can add a scale closer to this value, for example 1 per 700. Close the calculator. Double click on the viewport and go to the scale list again and this time click on custom. I have to add a new scale. First, I type the name appearing in the scale list, 1 per 700, and then 1 for the paper units and 700 for the drawing units. Click on OK, close the window, and finally select the scale from the list. How to add a viewport in a layout tab. Click on the last tab at the ribbon called Layout. Ah, and you cannot find this tab on the model space, only here in the layouts. Then on Layout Viewports, let's click here to add a rectangular viewport. And then this is like a rectangle. We just have to draw it anywhere here. After specifying the opposite corner, the full drawing appears in this new viewport in a way that all the objects fit there. 
So as you may guess, we can add as many as few ports as we wish and there are also another two types that I am going to show you right now. Polygonal viewport. With this type, we draw a closed polyline and it works in the same way as the rectangular viewport. When you finish drawing it, select close or press enter. Finally, there is the object type. We choose this option if the viewport is neither rectangular nor polygonal. This command works a bit different than the others, as the object has to be already in the layout. So I'm going to draw a circle first. And it could be a different type of object as long as it's a close boundary. Finally, I click on Object Viewport, select a circle and a viewport is generated there. How to create a custom view. Now we are back in our layout tab, but this time with just two viewports. I'm going to duplicate the viewport at the right in order to have my main drawing at the left and at the right I will have two details. Let's switch to the model space. And now I'm heading towards these controls at the top left corner. Specifically, I'm going to click on the one in the middle that says Stop, which is the view control. Here, you can switch from the six standard views, top, bottom, left, right, front, back, and four 3D isometric projections. Apart from those, we can create our custom model views. And you can see that in this file, there is actually a custom view created, it's called number one, which brings us to this section of the drawing. Now let's create a new custom view of the John O'Toole office, this one. So for that I have to go to the view manager and you can see this window appearing. Now we have to create a new view, I need to choose a name John no tool. Then on the view category, let's keep known. And below, let's stay with the current display. Click on OK to confirm. And here we can see some information about this view along with a small preview of that section. I apply and close the window. And next, let's create another one. For example, here, the office of Patty Morris. I just have to repeat the same steps in View Manager, then I click on New again for the name, then I choose Patty Morris, and this time, instead of current display, let's define a window, just to show you there is another way. Click on OK, and we have created two custom views of two offices. As you can see, we can easily switch between these new views here in custom model views. And look how easy and quick it is for this kind of situations as I am avoiding searching out for these people offices around all the building. Now, how can we take advantage of this in the viewports of the layout tab? Easy. First, I double click on this viewport to switch to the model space, go to top, ah and now this is important, I want to take this opportunity to tell you when these controls appear on the viewport it means we are in the model space. Sometimes beginners find it hard to understand the difference, especially if the viewport is hidden, so you can always pay attention to that. Now I select the office of John Tool. nice. But it didn't zoom enough as I was expecting, so let's do it manually with the mouse. Now it's fine. And then, what is the closest scale to 0.022887? As 0.02 is exactly 1 per 50, I'm going to try it out. And it fits perfectly. Then I switch to the viewport below. 
double click on it, choose the custom view of Patty Office, and finally set the same 1 per 50 scale. Once everything is finished and I am happy with the viewports, I can lock each of them in order to avoid changing the scale or move them accidentally. Add the current scale as a text automatically. To finish this tutorial, I'm going to add a label text for each viewport with a field that updates the scale in the text every time I change it. This is also a very nice feature and we are going to learn how it works. First I'm going to activate the command single line text. Then for the first point I'm hovering this endpoint, drag down a bit, click here. For the height, it's fine this length more or less. Then I set the text horizontal and I type main drawing. I click anywhere, press escape to exit the command and the next thing, I'm going to copy the text and to place it exactly in the same position according to each viewport, I choose this endpoint as my base point and then click on the same corner of each viewport. After I have to rename these two texts by double clicking on them, and I change to the appropriate names, John and Patty offices, and press escape. And the next thing, I'm going to insert a field. To do that, I double click in the first text, then with the right button of the mouse, I go to insert field, and you can see this window opening. Now on field category, I'm going to select objects, here again object, and then click on this button Object Type and what I need to do is to select a viewport. Next I need to choose the property which in this case is Custom Scale. For the format I'm going to use this time the scale name and you can see that the preview is correct 1 per 700. Click on OK to confirm changes and as you can see the scale appears next to the text and displays the current scale of the viewport. Then I just need to do the same for the John office and Patty offices. I'm going to select the viewport, custom scale, and this time instead of use the custom scale, I go for this format, and you can see it also displays the current scale. For the last viewport, you just do the same steps and the result will be the same. The great advantage of using fields is that they update any time we modify the parameters. If I change one of the scales and make sure you unlock the viewport, let's put 140 which is a bit smaller and the field updates even most of the time it doesn't show the change automatically. But if you save the drawing and open it again, you will see the new value appearing. However, if you just want to see the change right away, to make sure this works, type regen, press enter, and you can see it now shows the new scale of 1 per 40. So it was everything for today. But this time, before leaving, I want to mention that I just started a page on Patreon for Kelly Black. There, you can support this channel to help me keep creating more content here. I would really appreciate that. Even of course, I'm already grateful that you find these videos available and that they are helping you to speed up your knowledge. Without your support, nothing of this would be possible. So, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.